Hi everybody. I thought I'd hop on today and do a video about my favorite cookbooks. I've done a few cooking videos and um, I kind of wanted to, I just touched upon this a little bit, but I wanted to kind of go in a little bit more depth today about my favorite cookbooks, what I use, how I use them, and that type of thing. So the first thing I want to show you is it's not really even a book. <laughs> this is my recipe holder. It's just a box that I've had it for years and it's just really a box that I, you know, I have got, I've got tabbed dividers inside to show, you know, to um, separate out all the different categories. And these are recipes that I've collected over the years. Some of them I haven't used in years, but, you know, as I've changed my cooking throughout the years, you know, the way that I eat, it's changed, but I've kind of kept some of the um, old recipes just because some of them are a little too hard to give up. But anyway, that's my first go-to, you know, item that, you know, that I go to. It's just my recipes that I've collected over the years. Sometimes I'll go to a family event and we'll have, you know, someone will have brought something that, um, is really good so I get a recipe there I just write it down and put it in my little box you know so I have it for my little recipe repertoire the next oh and one thing that I wanted to say was this cookbook here I've shown it in my past thrifty videos this is the tightwad gazette now I I'd mentioned it before that this lady here had a um, frugal newsletter years ago back in the 80s I think she started 80s and 90s um, and she has recipes in here for what she calls universal recipes and I was watching um, a cooking video for the, the American Homesteader on YouTube the other day and Jamie from the American Homesteader is the, the wife and she was cooking a broccoli and cheese soup recipe and she shockingly she mentioned that she um, has a lot of recipes and she calls them her formulas and so it's the same thing as the universal recipe thing. She made this broccoli and cheese soup and she stopped at one point and said, okay, from this point here, you can do broccoli and cheese soup. You can do a queso sauce. You can do an Alfredo sauce. Um, I think she mentioned macaroni and cheese, but anyway, she takes it and makes all those different recipes from the one basic cheese sauce recipe that she has. So as you can see, you guys, I know I mentioned it in my past video, this lady, 1980s, and then Jamie did that video just the other day, well, in December of 2018. So that's a, a, a um, you know, the universal recipe thing is a standard go-to that a lot of people have been using for a lot of years. It works, you guys. So, you know, develop some recipes in your repertoire that are what we call universal recipes, and, um, you know, you won't regret it. Um, so, like I said, this was one of my favorites. Her universal recipes are fantastic. I, I, um, you know, she's got lots of things like even make your own baking powder, make your own bis bisquick baking mix, you know, so things like that. Um, and th there, oh, there's another lady on, um, she has a website called Budget 101. I don't know the lady's name, but she's been around for quite a while, and she has a ton of copycat recipes, like, um, you know, the Olive Garden um, dressing recipe that everybody loves. She's got a ton of those on there. So um, there's tons of resources. If you guys don't know how to cook, I'm telling you, this, this, this is the way to go, is do that universal recipe thing. And I am forever you know um, changing up a recipe and I'll, I I have some certain things that I can't eat and so I'll get a recipe that calls for that item and I'll just put something in instead that I can eat and um, so it really you know it makes your your recipes universal you can do so many different things with them um, and living you know your pantry principle same thing that she's you know in this book here she talks about the pantry principle and it kind of goes along the same lines you know, um, if you use what you have, that kind of makes your recipes universal. I, um, what did I make the other day? I made a recipe the other day and I, I completely went through my pantry and said, okay, what do I have that I can use, that I can make with this? I think I did a recipe search online and added in the, just the items that I had and I came up with some, uh, you know, some recipes. Um, so you never know, you know, where you can find recipes, you know, check out online. There's some great stuff online. Um, I am supposed to eat gluten-free and um, uh, dairy-free and all that stuff. And I have the migraine thing, so I can't eat chocolate. But I, um, 
I um, bought some carob a little while ago. I bought some carob chips and some carob powder. And I was, you know, with, with the intention of, I want to make a few things that I kind of really miss. I, I, I used to be a big time chocoholic, but not anymore because I can't eat it because of the headaches. But, um, you know, you can eat that chocolate. And I wanted to experiment. Like, in the summertime, I really miss chocolate sauce like I want to have a hot fudge sundae I can't have dairy and I can't have chocolate so I've got you know I over time I've developed um, you know my little repertoire I, I showed you guys before I have an ice cream maker and an ice cream um, book cookbook recipe with all dairy free recipes in it and I've tried a couple so I've got the dairy part of it the non-dairy part of it down and then I now I've got the carob so I want to make a, a chocolate sauce but what I made the other day was I went on Pinterest and I just did a search on you know carob desserts and it came up with a brownie recipe that was dairy free it was gluten free vegan dairy free and sometimes those recipes aren't that great well you guys it was the best brownies I've ever had and they were all gluten-free, dairy-free, all my allergy-free things. And, and oh, what, a, what a great find. I can't even tell you how happy I was to have that. You know, and, you know if you do get that chocolate craving, hey, you know, I, I can solve that now. Okay, so um, Amy Decisions, the Tightwad Gazette. That's my, one of my go-to uh, cookbooks. This is another one that I really, really like. Apple Recipes. Now, I just got this. You know, in Maine, we have a lot of... Um, apple orchards and I just got this at an apple orchard and this is the recipe that I like to use it's one recipe in here I keep it for the one recipe and it's applesauce muffins and it calls for bisquick baking mix but you know you can make your own bisquick mix like I said you can make your own bisquick but anyway these are my favorite applesauce muffins so I keep this recipe book for that alone um, my son and daughter-in-law like to get they don't like to have a cluttery kitchen, so they decided to get one cookbook, one general cookbook that could, they could use for many things, and they love it. And um, my son and I were talking about it one day, so they bought me this cookbook. It's The Joy of Cooking. This is a fantastic cookbook for, you know, just general. I mean, this will tell you techniques, um, all kinds of different, you know, just general cooking, baking, um, tons of different just all-around good cookbook if you want an all-around good cookbook <clears throat> this is a really good one to make one day I was at his house and he made a minestrone soup recipe from here that was fantastic and I have to say that most recipes I've made from there are really good okay so the next one I'm gonna show you is this one here this is what I was telling you guys about in my ice cream maker video this is the dairy-free ice cream one now I like I told you in my other video I'll link that down below so you guys can watch that too. But um, my sister made every recipe in this book. And um, so she's well versed in all these recipes. I have made the pistachio one several times. And I love it. That's kind of one of my go-tos. Oh my gosh, it's so good, you guys. You don't miss dairy. When you when you are able to you know, make up for it with other things make it your way then you don't miss it but the um, pistachio one was fantastic now my next one I'm gonna try is the vanilla one and that one is the one I'm gonna try that carob chocolate sauce with so I have an ongoing little little thing with that and here is a here is the cookbook and instruction manual for my ice cream maker so those two I use this one here is my bread maker my bread machine cookbook um, there are quite a few recipes in here and in all honesty this particular bread machine I had and it died on me I just used it so much that it died and then I got another one which is this one this well-built one I got it I got both of them actually at um, yard sales or thrift stores or something and I, when I got the second one I I like the recipes in the recipe book for the first one that died on me so I kept the book and I just adjust it you have to fill them differently and I just adjust the recipes in the first book to fit the second uh, bread machine maker so I can use it for that and it works fantastic I absolutely love it I, I just made some bread the other day so I, I love that and so there's another tip you know, if you do have something like that, like I liked the recipes in the first book, but that machine was long gone and it's so old, I'll probably never find another one like it. Um, and I wouldn't buy one new anyway. But I adjusted it to, you know, the new bread maker, which is smaller, by the way. But anyway, 
Um, this is the next one that I use, and there's only a few recipes in this one. It's an old sunset book. I don't know if you guys have been around for a while. You re remember the sunset books? They have, I guess, whole lines of different kinds of books. Well, this is the um, walk cookbook. And in this one, I like the stir fry recipes. And the, the, what I particularly like in here are the sauces that they have for them. Um, there is a broccoli and um, beef and broccoli recipe in here that's super good. I mean, look, look at the pages. They're filthy. Let's see if I can get it in here. The pages are all dirty because, because I used it so much. Look at that. Um, so this one was um, Thai chicken and basil. I like that one. Um, chicken and snow peas is another one. I really, really, really like that one. Chicken and snow peas and beef and broccoli are my two favorites out of this cookbook. So I keep it just for that. But there's other good things in there too. This one here, old farmhouse cookbook. This is another oldie, ideals. But anyway, I like this one because there's a good recipe in here for carrot cake. Carrot cake with cream cheese frosting. But it has a bunch of really good recipes, and they're old-fashioned ones. They're like the old-fashioned, old-timey way of cooking, and I love that one. So I keep that. Um, and then I got a couple magazines that I super-duper really love. Now, these magazines I got at Sam's Club, and this one here, I couldn't believe it when I found it. Waste less, you guys. That is right up my alley. Not, I hate wasting anything, and I like to recycle and reuse and all that stuff. Well, I found inside this recipe for the Asian drumsticks. Oh my goodness, you guys. That recipe is, I, that's my standard go-to marinade now. I use it all the time. I always usually have um, a canning jar of it in my refrigerator because I keep it all the time. Um, and so anyway, this magazine is awesome. It tells you how you can use up what you've got. Um, how different things you can do with like say you have um, a jar of pasta sauce that's half full in your refrigerator what can you do with it you know and they give you ideas on that so this is an awesome awesome one they tell you how better to um, shop so that you don't have waste but the statistics that they give in here about how much food people waste every week just because it goes bad and they don't really know how to save preserve food or how to buy it properly or you know how much to buy um, so that's an awesome cook. I love that that uh, magazine. And I will tell you, I've never been able to find it since I bought it there. And this is another one. This is along the lines of the Universal Recipe. Recipes your way. And what this cookbook does is it will give you a basic recipe. Like, let me see if I can find a good one. Um, there's one in here I really particularly like, and it's for um, uh, party mix. I love that Chex party mix stuff. And they give you how many different recipes? So what they do is they give you the initial, they call it snack mix. They give you that recipe. It's five cups of crunchy treats. Well, then they tell you crunchy treats will be considered bagel chips, cheese crackers, corn chips, fish chips, oyster crackers, pretzels, sticks, sesame sticks, you know, and the list goes on. And then they'll give you three cups of nuts. Well, you can choose almonds, cashews, hazelnuts. So this is all the universal recipe, guys. How much have I been telling you about the universal recipe thing? And then I found a cookbook all about just like that. And there's recipes in here for ice cream, frozen yogurt, um, cobbler. <laughs> you know, who would have known there was that many different ways to make cobbler? Oatmeal cookies, um, I mean, stir fries. Oh, and these lovely little, um, you know, those, uh, I love those recipes that you find on Tasty uh, for the different, um, what do they call those? Sliders. <laughs> so so anyway this is a universal recipe thing so you see guys i'm telling you i live by that and i love it <clears throat> now i've done and these my last two books i've done videos on before i found them at thrift stores two different times but these are their america's test kitchen cookbooks this one's cover and bake now i've made on this one i've made the macaroni and cheese that was unbelievably good <laughs> but why i like and then this other one i'll just show you this one real quick quick recipes I haven't made anything out of that one yet, but they've got some cinnamon rolls in there I want to try. But anyway, these American Test, America's Test Kitchen cookbooks I love because they do, um, you know, they're a test kitchen. So they test pots and pans and kitchen utensils and things like that. And they give great, great, great tips on um, techniques on how you do certain things. 
how you would cook this and how you would cook that. And they've tested so many. So, hey, they're tried and true recipes. They literally did try hundreds of recipes before they came up with the recipe that they have. Um, I don't judge those ones too, too much because, you know, I don't mess around with those recipes because they, I figure they've done all the testing. They know what, what's good and what isn't. So I do, I do kind of try to stick to their recipes. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, my, my recipe books that, my cookbooks that I wanted to show you guys and my recipes. I mean, these are my go-tos, go-tos all the time I'm in those recipes, you know, those recipe books. Um. So I think every day, almost every day, I'm in these cookbooks. When I want something different and I really don't know what I want, I start looking through my cookbooks and my recipe box and say, hey, why haven't I cooked in a while? Or what do I have on hand that I can make something with, you know? Um, so anyway, those are my recipe, my cookbooks and my go-tos. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, thank you, subscribers. And if you guys haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below. And please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me um, with YouTube and moving my video up and all that stuff. And make a comment. Let me know what you guys have for cookbooks. I would love, love, love to know. I'm always expanding. You know, I'm always trying new things. And I really love to try, you know, I love the cooking. And I like to try new cookbooks and new things and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, you guys, thank you so, so much. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, have a great rest of your day. It's a beautiful, sunshiny day here, cold and crisp. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.